Thanksgiving is coming up and my family keeps bothering me like, where are you going? Whose house are you going to? Are you going to your boyfriend's house? Or are you going to our Thanksgiving, your dad's? I'm sorry, Thanksgiving is about food. One of my favorite holidays, okay? And let me just show you my boyfriend. Whose house do you think I'm going to? Oh. <laughs> I shaved, I shaved, and we didn't do nothing. I ain't never had that ever happen to me. I'm trying to get see what that be like right there. Look, be in that chat, be in that chat. Will suck a dick drop that gorgeous? Shut the f up! Shut the f up! This is not a fucking joke! Make me Come shit. on, cuz! Hey, don't be talking about all that dick me shit around me. Shut the f up, nigga. It's okay. It's always tomorrow, right? <laughs> I don't think y'all get it. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think y'all get, I don't think you're getting it. Like, I'm a, I'm a fucking Wolverine lady. Hair gonna go back in like, I don't know, three seconds. Like, I'm gonna be, like, I'm gonna be a fucking porcupine by the time you get to me. It's simple. He don't like you. I think I should take this time. And cry myself to sleep. The f man, it's really funny, dog. Let you deny them one time out of a million, bro. They just go berserk. They have a meltdown. They break down. They don't know how to handle it, bro. Forget you being tired. You worked a seventy-hour work week, right? Whatever could be going on, it could be a legit reason. They are gonna come up with a thousand and one reasons why you didn't want to do it, and all of them are negative, and none of them are her fault. Right, but I'm gonna tell you one thing, bro. She shaved that thing for you, my boy. She wanted you to come beat that Virginia up, cross that state line. You feel me? That Virginia state line, and you ain't won't do it. She shaved it, bro. That's crazy. She probably ovulating. That's why she's so worked up. Which you might have dodged a bullet because when a woman ovulating, bro, it's a good chance you gonna get pregnant. You probably dodged a bullet, my guy. Please don't get that girl that leverage over you. that I came home to like freaking the whole floor was gone hmm. like are you serious that was so freaking childish hmm. of you like so petty like what's the reason for that hmm. is that all you can say is hmm huh is that it hmm. you know you're so freaking childish no wonder I cheated on you I needed a man maybe you didn't turn into a man because your dad wasn't even in your life because he didn't even want you you pissed me off so much this is why you don't amount to anything because you're so childish. Nah, man, my man said he paid for the flow. He could break the flow straight up. You won't go cheat? Well, guess what? He finna rip this uh this flow up. It is what it is. It was his money. Nah, you just gotta go get a new flow. You shouldn't have been cheating, baby. It is what it is. Get over it. Hey, any nigga f with my hoe, cuz I swear to God, you better keep hiding it, cuz I swear. If I find out one of y'all niggas f with my hoe, cuz I'm telling you, I'm gonna put. Hey, I, I ain't playing about that shit, though. I ain't playing about my little shit. I don't give a fuck what these other niggas on, but me, I ain't playing, cuz. Hey, you better keep hiding that shit on my mom. He need to leave that dope alone. You haven't, so he, you haven't, he, haven't he need to leave that dope alone. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that's crazy. They gonna do everything but leave. They gonna cheat but leave. They gonna break things, not leave. They gonna throw temper tantrums, not leave. They gonna become narcissists, not leave. All kind of stuff, bro. Just leave. Why you gotta damage the man's personal property? When I see a woman that's overbearing and annoying, I know her man's a bitch by default. So what I'm saying is that when a woman acts out of pocket, 
what you're inadvertently doing is making your man look bad in the process. Okay. Not only do you embarrass yourself, you embarrass your man, which is why so many guys hate girls that operate a certain way because they know deep down that the responsibility of me having a girl is if she behaves a way, I'm going to look crazy. Regardless of how I behave, I could be the best dude on earth, but if she acts crazy, a woman is a mere reflection of your man's masculinity. Mm -hmm. You know what's the scariest thing about trusting somebody? Because you will never know who they are when you're not around. Like you will never know because you're not around, right? That Think about that shit. You could trust them, but at the end of the day, you will still never ever know who they are when you're not around. That's crazy. The fact that you messaged my mom and you told her that you wanted to take her out on a date, is that the fucking secret you wanted me to tell the fucking world? You're my bad as hell, you can't blame me. Why would you fucking contact my mom? Because their daughter didn't want me, so I had to level up. I literally, my mom was like, oh my god, I saw that video of you and that boy blew up, blah, 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 blah. I put you guys in contact because she thought it was really cute. And now she's telling me that you want to fuck her. That's weird, Hayden. Don't you think that's fucking, don't you think that's weird? Don't you think that's a little what? weird that you're hitting up my mom? Would you rather have a Charmander or a Charizard, huh? Nah, man, my boy, a real city boy, he went and hollered at the mama. That's diabolical. I ain't even gonna lie to you, boy. You got balls. You wish that was you, huh? <laughs> Absolutely have to have dark in order to have light. If you have dark on dark, you basically have nothing. There we are. You know, it's like in life. It Got to have a little sadness once in a while so you, you know when the good times come. I'm waiting on the good times now. There. I mix. Many of y'all are not ready to have this conversation, but this right here is the greenest, most sustainable way to live your life. This right here spits in the face of the consumerism, the decadence, and the excess that is rotting our society from the inside out. Society will tell you this is beautiful, but this is a lie created by big furniture to keep you trapped in a cycle of pointless consumer spending. The wise philosopher Tyler Durden once said, the things you own end up owning you. You might look at this room and see a bunch of pretty things. I look at this room and all I see are chains. Chains tying you down to the material world, preventing your soul from ascending to higher forms of existence and achieving true enlightenment. If Jesus was alive today, this is what his room would look like. Gun and all, he would need the strap. Y'all are too crazy. Nah, real talk, man. I remember when I was uh, roommates with my partner, bro. I had a futon, a little chair, and a, a TV on on top of a folding table. That's what I had, bro. I was good with that, bro. I didn't need much more than that. I wasn't gonna be spending much time there to begin with. I was on my grind. I was working. I was in college. I was uh, uh, wait, waiting tables and shit like that. I was barely there. And when I was there, all I needed was something to lie on, bro. Something to sit on to play the game. That was it. Simple lives, man. All that decorating and stuff that shit costs extra money that i didn't have so if i didn't have it i knew damn well women my age didn't have it right because you're just as broke as i am so they let me know if you ever go to a young lady's house back then you know all of that shit was either a funded by credit cards or maybe mom and dad gave it to them or some little dude that's blowing their back out gave him the bread. Because if I didn't have it and I was pretty, do I was doing all right, you know, straight up. I was making a little money, but not a lot. But come on, man. The math just wasn't math. And when I would go in certain women's houses and shit. Okay, so I have a friend who shared with me that he's considering divorcing his wife of 30 years for, as he puts it, doing exactly what I said she could do. It's just that she didn't do it in the way that it was supposed to be done. It turns out that... uh 28 years ago, two years into their marriage, he got caught cheating on his wife and he pleaded with her to stay and he made two promises. One, it'll never happen again. And two, if the opportunity ever presents itself, you can take it and there will be no questions asked. Well, fast forward to this year, he learned that she got her leg back two years ago and he was infuriated. He said, wait a minute, you were supposed to have gotten that out of your system decades ago. And she said, uh, actually, the opportunity never presented itself decades ago. And number two, you're not the one that dictates when I get my lick back. You just have to hold up your end of the agreement. What are your thoughts? What would be your advice for youngins coming in when they first get that paycheck? What should they do with it first? So your question, it depends on what you come from. Like, there is no need for KJ to buy me a house. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of parents in a lot of situations, they live vicariously through their kids. So when they make it, it's we made it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We need this house. We, it's, it's that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's those pressures mm -hmm. that some parents put on their kids, which is unfair. When you ask white kids, you know, what's the first thing you bought? They've never said anything about buying their parents anything. They're taught to move the money forward, mm -hmm. right? So whatever money they get, they're saving so when they get kids, they can take care of their kids for their kids to take care of their kids. Right. We're taught when we make money, move back. We got to take care of our yeah. parents. We got to take care of our parents. So by the time we all get kids, there's no money left, mm. right? So the life we gave our parents, we can't give our kids. So there's no generational, we can't use no the generational, generational wealth, wealth yeah. because we're moving it back. Right. And we're taught that. Yeah. Ah, that's real, bro. You know, I feel like a lot of those athletes do come from the hood and they be coming from like a single mother household. And guess what? If your mama been on Section 8, yeah, your whole life, as soon as you get $30 million, you don't think she's going to want something, bro? Come on. She feel like you owe her her life. A lot of women don't understand that. First of all, she ain't even want you in the first place. She's just only trapping your daddy. I ain't going to say that. That's, that's not everybody, but a large percentage. That's how he identifies. How do you identify? Actually, I identify as... Uh, oh, here we go. It's that long plethora of, what? oh, my God. <laughs> I... Hey, they have to get Granny canceled. They have to get Granny canceled. Will, let me get a chair. I have a question for the guys. Okay, I'm listening. Do you guys even care when we spend all that money on the sexy lingerie and the sexy outfits? No, we don't care nothing about that. Because it ends up being on for like three seconds. Exactly. It's unnecessary. Like the little brown underwear that they put on the Reese cup. Or the technical difficulty of us even putting it on and then us taking it off. We both look dumb needing an instruction manual and trying to figure out how the hell did I even get in it. Yeah, and depending on how long it takes you to get out that outfit, we both going to be sleeping. Like, does it really matter all the effort that, you know, or the pressure us as women, we put on ourselves for men to have to look a certain way or to have to put on the outfit, get the work done, do all this stuff. Like, do y'all even care? I mean, yeah, we care that you're trying to do something special for us, but men are easy. Just bring yourself, your stretch marks, and two bedside water bottles. I understand that we don't got to do things for you. We have to do things for ourselves to help love ourselves and do what we feel is best for us. But low key, like... Does it even matter? Yeah, sorry, ma'am. It don't matter as long as you're giving us the booty. And we don't even care how you give it to us. You can give it to us with lotion or ashen. We still gonna receive it, Lord have mercy. There's two things happen when you have people in your life. You either grow with them or you grow apart. It's, it's that simple. It's two things. If you're going in this direction and your friends aren't going in that direction, guess what? Alright, it's time for you to head upstairs, take a shower, and get ready to eat some pussy. I don't want you no pussy. Did I ask you what the fuck you wanted to do? No, the fuck I did not. Now go upstairs, take a shower, and get ready to eat some pussy. Like the fuck I said. I guess you could say I was a stay-at-home wife for a little mm -hmm. while. We weren't legally married, but we were together for right. a long time, for um, a few years. I was working when we met. I was continuing to work. Pandemic came, I lost my job. I wasn't required to go back to work. I could pretty much just like be in the house, you know, things like that. I didn't really have to think about it too much. I decided to leave that relationship because I felt like there was nothing wrong necessarily with it, but I felt like I wasn't growing in it. My goals aren't necessarily to be a housewife. I don't necessarily see myself having children. I don't see myself being a mom and just being stuck in the house. For me, I don't think I could just be limited to just being being a housewife. So a lot of people say you had a, a good man, right? Yeah, what, absolutely. I'll never take that and, away. And you left okay. this good man. So what are you hoping to find? Because obviously the next person you date going to have to meet that standard. You know? Sometimes when you're in those type of relationships, when you're in that role, that's just like, oh, they want you to, that's all they want you to do. And to me, I just what, didn't want to do it anymore. You want to be treat like the queen, but still do what you want to do no, in between. No, but here's my it's thing, right? And maybe I got a son. He, he, he raps. His, his rap name is Tut Tarantino. If you ever listen to some of his raps, I'm like, oh my God, where does this come from, son? You grew up in a gated community your whole life, but he's rapping my life because we romanticize and fantasize about that old thug life, ghetto life and all of that stuff. When, when, when. 
just want to get this off my chest real quick. Listen, so many people ask me, if you know so much about love, why are you single, Demetri? And personally, I believe it's a very simple answer. I date very intentionally. See, for me to go on a date, mama, for me to ask you out on a date, you got to understand, girl, I've already done my homework on you. I am, I've been on your Instagram. I am more than likely a fan of yours at this point. I probably know your grandma's name. Don't fuck with me. There's a goal at the end of this for me. There's always been a goal. Marriage, children, that family unit. I want that. I want the match in pajamas around Christmas. I want to be the one about the ring. You showing off to your friends. That's just me. I've always been, hey, is this who I am? To make it on a second date, that means I heard that spark, girl. That like Lil Wayne lighter flick done went off somewhere up in here. They say be the Lulu till it's true, true. Somebody recently told me that, God damn it, I'm the Lulu. I also don't force my expectations on people. I don't expect a, a kiss. I don't expect you to hug me, take me home, fuck me, none of that. I don't rush because what is meant for me will always be right on time. I'm selfish right now. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like to be in a relationship, you really got to be like, okay, I have to be um, mindful of a lot of things that I do and say, and, excuse me, my time, mainly my time. Hmm. And uh, I'm just not in that place. I'm in a place of, if I get a car right now to go to LA, like I just got a car to go to LA, I'm going, I just want a plane ticket. I'm going. I just want to get up and go. I, I want to go. Ladies, if you got a good husband, a good man, hold on tight. Another woman will take your husband. They'll take him. There's women in here right now with stolen husbands. <laughs> you know who you are. You're like, that bitch was slipping. Right, hold tight, or another woman will take your man. Fellas, you don't gotta really worry about that. <laughs> Nobody's taking your wife. Oh, don't get me wrong, they'll fuck your wife. <laughs> oh, they'll fuck her good. They'll fuck her better than you. But they're not gonna take her. There's no guy going, yeah, I want her to yell at me the way she yelled at him. <laughs> I want to live in a house with no pictures of my mother. <laughs> or they'll fuck her, and then they'll return her. <laughs> I believe this is yours. <laughs> bitch had me feeling bad about myself. Ladies, I'm going to tell y'all some real shit, man. If you got a solid, competent man, and you know your homegirls or city girls, they ran through, man, them the worst type of women to bring around your dude, because guess what? They will slime you out straight up. They will definitely stick a knife in your back to get what you got, because to them, it ain't easy to find that type of guy. They wouldn't even know where to go get it. They really wouldn't, bro. You know, they used to go into the little hot. They used to go into the little hood lounges, the little bars, the little hookah lounges and stuff like that, man. And the same type of men going to be there every single time. Dude just trying to smash and dash, you know what I'm saying? Cross that Virginia State line or whatever. But you come around with a nice dude that's actually handling his business, handling his business and, you know, taking care of home and stuff like that. They be wanting that. And some of them girls would definitely stick a knife in your back to get that man straight up.
Say, bro, the 90s was the last decade of when they had slim fit women. I promise you, bro. Black women. I be seeing skinny white women all the time. But black women, but I was in Walmart the other day and I was just trying to count how many slim black women I saw. I swear to God, bro. I'm in there. I think I was in there for maybe 20 minutes and I got up to like 10. But man, the whales, Lord have mercy. It was Buku with them. Oh, Lord. It was a lot of them. Bro, I'm telling you, if you want to see slim black women, this is where you got to go. Trader Joe's. Whole Foods, right? Really, that's really it. Those little hippie, uh, you know, cafes and stuff like that 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 sell superfood smoothies and shit like that. You'll you'll see them there, right? But a lot of times, a lot of you guys ain't gonna connect culturally with them. I ain't even gonna lie to you, bro. If you one of them ham hock, pork chop, fried sandwich eating dudes, y'all ain't gonna be in alignment, bro. I'm telling you, but. That's what it at if you're looking for that type of girl, bro. Anyways, guys, this was today's segment positive. This was today's segment of positive vibes, I guess. Because <laughs> it's, it's definitely uh, euphoric to see, you know, this type of shit going on. This is some old school walking down memory lane vibes right here, dog. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I'm going to get at y'all on the next one.